Sabres and Penguins tonight. We'll preview the game, look at some of my favorite betting odds for tonight's game. And also, we got a cool jersey matchup to talk about. That's up ahead here on the Locked On Sabres podcast. <laughs> Your Locked On Sabres, your daily podcast on the Buffalo Sabres. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Sabres your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including our YouTube channel. Be sure to check us out on the Locked On Sabres YouTube channel. Jody Biasi on today's show at Locked On Sabres to follow us on Twitter at Sneaky Joe Sports for myself on Twitter. Uh, speaking of Twitter, well, we've got lots of stuff to get to. We're going to preview the Sabres and Penguins matchup for tonight. Talk a little bit about uniforms because we had a cool jersey matchup between the two teams. We've got um, lineups for both the Sabres and the Penguins to go through. Some of my favorite betting lines for tonight. And also... What this game could mean in the standings down the road, just I got to take on a Pittsburgh, and this game could be important when we look back at it uh, later in the year. But before we do that, uh, Twitter for today, our tweet of the day, Twitter question of the day, it's not too much of a question, and it's more of a question for you, the listener. Uh, earlier today at Lockdown Sabres, I put up a poll uh, I thought it was an interesting question. I wanted to throw it up here to see what fans thought of it. The poll was after the Vegas Golden Knights and Jack Eichel win again on, uh, what was last night? Tuesday night. Again on Tuesday night. They are second place in the NHL, only behind the Boston Bruins. Eichel with another incredible assist in overtime to win the game for Vegas. And as you've noticed here on the podcast, the... Uh, the Hack Eichel report, which we were planning on doing, has kind of gone away because it's not really all that fun when they're winning all of these games. Put a poll up. At Lockdown Sabres, you could vote on it. This season, the Sabres make the playoffs, but Jack Eichel and the Golden Knights win the Stanley Cup. Are you signing up? It's a very tough hypothetical. Eichel wins the Cup, but the Sabres make the playoffs. Do you take that trade-off? This is one of those questions where if you're on the no side, you feel very strongly about it. If you're on the yes side, you feel very strongly about it. And it's not too far off of being 50-50. 56% of 2,100 votes said they would sign up for that. Sabres make the playoffs knowing that Eichel and the Golden Knights win the cup. 43.9% did say no, though. That is a much larger amount of people than I would have thought. Uh, saying no. So interesting poll. I uh, got some cool comments. Uh, uh, nighttime stories tweeted at us. And we'd love to see Tuck be a part of the Sabres in the playoffs and making a deep run. Um, Timothy Hansford's and Knights and Sabres Stanley Cup final make it happen. So and then uh, beyond 716 on Twitter. Sure, why not? The Jack Eichel stuff is and always will be in the rearview mirror for Sabre fans. Uh, so I think that was the general attitude I saw, but a lot of the votes poured in on no. We saw Riley win the cup, and there's more venom to uh, to Eichel and Sabres fans. So I, I get answering no. I would have said yes because I just need to see the damn team make the playoffs for the first time since I was literally in high school. But anyways, uh, interesting poll and uh, good discussion on Twitter. Uh, Sabres and Penguins on Wednesday night. It's a 7.30 puck drop. So if you're looking for it on MSG, you're not going to find it. It's on TNT. So go to TNT or the Watch TNT app to find it. You can stream it there, of course. They're very good with their um, their streaming, by the way. It's a lot of theirs through the phone. So you kind of got to aircast it to your TV, almost through the TNT app. But anyways, it's on TNT. 7.30 puck drop against the Pittsburgh Penguins. And a cool feature about tonight's game is that the two teams are going to be wearing their reverse retro uniforms. So we've got the Sabres uh, wearing their white goat heads, their blue and gold white goat heads, I should say. And then we have the Penguins wearing and bringing back RoboPen. If you don't remember, RoboPen 
late 90s uniforms, early 2000s. I just put it up on our YouTube channel. Uh, The Penguin inside of the triangle. Uh, I think it's super sharp. I grew up with that jersey for the Penguin, so I like it a lot. I also like the gold shoulders for the Penguin's uniform. Makes it pop a little bit more. So really cool uniform matchup tonight uh, with both teams debuting their reverse retros and the Sabres uh, wearing white at home, which is always cool also. Sabres wearing white at home and they will be playing the Penguins and the RoboPen jerseys. So that's what the two teams will be wearing for tonight's game. The Sabres lineup, meanwhile, will look the same as it did in the previous matchup. Uh, Tage Thompson with Kyle Poso and Jeff Skinner. Casey Middlestat with Jack Quinn and Victor Olofsson. Dylan Cousins centering Alex Tuck and J.J. Paterka. Peyton Krebs centering Rasmus Asplund and Zemgis Gergensen. And then on the blue line, Jacob Bryson will be again with Rasmus Dahlin. Owen Power with Kale Clegg. Lawrence Pilot with Casey Fitzgerald. And for the Sabres, they will have Eric Comrie in goal for tonight's game. Uh, Comrie gets another start. Uh, That will be... His seventh start out of 10 games, which I like if we're going to go with a 70% clip. I'm going to actually do some quick math in my head real quick here. 82 games at a 70% clip is 57 starts. Uh, If we end up around 57 starts for Eric Comrie, I think that's a pretty sweet number uh, for the Sabres to land on. So it'll be Comrie in goal for Buffalo. This game, I think, is going to end up being meaningful in the standings. If these two teams continue along their current trajectory, Sabres are making it. They're making it known early on here that, Hey, this could be a team that is in playoff contention late in the season. Pittsburgh. Meanwhile, you know, typically they are a team that is in late season contention. Although I will say this about the penguins. They're very much like Chicago for me, where we were all waiting around for the, for the shoe to drop. When are they going to drive off the cliff? For Chicago, it happened about three years ago. They drove off the cliff. Tazen Kane got a little older. Duncan Keith aged out. Brent Seabrook retired. Corey Crawford retired. And a lot of their core fell apart. And what was left was just a couple of guys of the core. And yeah, it was the most important in Taze and Kane. But they were no longer good enough to carry everything around them. And they didn't have the secondary pieces to carry them through. And Chicago fell apart. Haven't been back to the playoffs since. And they are currently tanking. Here's Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh has kept their window open into Sidney Crosby and Evgeny Malkin's late 30s. Crosby at 35 years old. Malkin... At 36, by the way, should definitely include Chris Letang in that as well at 35 years old himself. This season, not off to a very good start. A 4-4-2 record for Pittsburgh, and they have lost five games in a row. They lost all four of their West Coast road trip. They played the same teams the Sabres did. They played Edmonton, they played Seattle, they played Vancouver, they played Calgary. They lost all four. And then, back yesterday, back home to lose to Boston, or maybe they were in Boston. They would have been in Boston, actually. But last night, they lose to Boston. So what the Sabres have in front of them is a team that has lost five games in a row and is on the second night of a back-to-back. Pretty good. Pretty good shape, uh, I would say, Sabres going into this. And it's possible Pittsburgh, although they are they do have a plus-two goal differential, it's possible they've hit the wall. It's eventually going to happen, and it's going to be a year where you don't expect it to happen, uh, as long as Crosby, Malkin, and Latang are all together. Um, But I am wondering, are they the team that's going to drop out? Are they the team that I thought Boston might have been, which is they age out, and that's the playoff spot that you could steal uh, because somebody out of the top eight was going to fall. Now, Some of the advanced numbers would tell you that's not happening with Pittsburgh. The Penguins are sixth in the NHL in expected goals for uh, with a 55.3%. So they do have the puck a lot. And when it comes to shot attempts, they are 12th in the NHL with 51.3%. By the way, one spot behind the Sabres uh, who are at 51.4% of the shot attempts when they are on the ice. So, I think Pittsburgh is probably better than their record says. I think they will get it together, which means 
They might be competing for a playoff spot late in the season. Sabres might be competing for a playoff spot late in the season. And this is a spot where the Sabres can get ahead of them and start to play with a little bit of a cushion, build a little bit of a cushion. So by the time Sabres run into some problems, which is going to happen over the course of 82 games, the Penguins get hot, which they're capable of doing that over the course of 82 games. You're going to want that cushion to be able to withstand them and stay ahead of them in the standings. And as it stands today, the Penguins have 10 points in 10 games. Sabres have 12 points in nine games. If you're able to win this game in regulation on home ice with them having a second of a back-to-back, then the Sabres would go to 14 points in 10 games and Pittsburgh would be at 10 points in 11 games. And that's, that's why you build the cushion. Four points better, an extra game to play. You chip away at that little by little throughout the course of the season. So it's not vital. It's November 2nd. But... A, a team that I think the Sabres could be competitive with uh, later in the year, uh, for sure. We'll preview what the Penguins lineup looks like for tonight's game, including their goaltender, who played last night, who's expected to play tonight, and uh, who's scoring for them. It's not much of a stunner, but we'll get to that when we come back here on the Lockdown Sabres podcast with Joe DiBiase. We are brought to you by Built Bar. We just caught, paused the pod for just a second. You got to try this. I'm talking about... Built Bar's new reimagined flavors. We've got cookie dough topper, coconut brownie bar, coconut brownie topper, white chocolate peppermint granola. It's Built's take on the granola bar. So it's more filling. It's still insanely tasty. And candy cane brownie puff, Built Puffs are like biting into the universe's most delicious cloud. First off, for anyone who hasn't tried Built Bars before, they're literally the best tasting protein bars ever built. And they're revolutionizing nutrition as we know it. It's 100% covered in real chocolate, 17 grams of protein, and shockingly low ca- sugar and calories, only 130 calories in most most Built Bars. Get 15% off your order right now by using the promo code LOCKEDON15 at Built.com. Go to Built.com, use the promo code LOCKEDON15 for 15% off at Built Bar. Joe DiBiase back here on the Locked on Sabres podcast. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. When you are done with us, be sure to make your second listen, Locked on Sports Today. From the games that matter the mo- to the most to the biggest stories in sports. Go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only Lockdown can provide. Lockdown Sports Today available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcast. What's going on with the Pittsburgh Penguins? The 4-4-2 Pittsburgh Penguins with head coach Mike Sullivan. So far this season, in 10 games played, no surprise, Sidney Crosby is their leader in points with 12 points in 10 games, five goals and seven assists. And no surprise, who is second? Evgeny Malkin with 10 points in 10 games, five goals in five assists. I mentioned Chris Letang earlier. His numbers are a little bit down early on. Only four assists, no goals scored uh, in nine games played. He is still playing the most minutes, though, at 23 minutes and 24 seconds a night. How about some of the secondary pieces? Well, they're not getting a ton of help around them, which has been part of their concern so far. Brian Rust has been okay. He's got four goals in 10 games played. Uh, Ricard Raquel does have five goals as well in the season, but only one assist. So they've got guys, but they're certainly thin and they are certainly thin on the blue line, which is kind of been their problem for a long time now. Uh, Their lines for tonight's game, Sidney Crosby will be centering Brian Rust and Jake Gensel. Gensel has only played six games so far this season. He's at four goals and three assists, so over a point a game. Second line, Evgeny Malkin centering Ricard Raquel and Jason Zucker. They have a very good top six. It's a complete top six. It's still great down the middle, good scoring wingers, and speed. All four of those guys, Gensel, Rust, Zucker, and Raquel, all all give Malkin and Crosby speed uh, around them, which makes it easier for them. Uh, Third and fourth line, though, is where they start to get taken advantage of a little bit. Drew O'Connor centering the third line with Danton Heinen and Kasperi Kapanen. And then the fourth line, Ryan Poling with Josh Archibald and Brock McGinn. And then the blue line. The blue line has been struggling a little bit. and. I don't know this is confirmed. Maybe it is, but the lineup I am looking at for tonight does not include Chris Letang. Uh, He was out on Tuesday night 
uh, due to an illness against the Penguins. So he's technically day-to-day. We don't know if he's going to be in the lineup, but the lineup I was looking at for Pittsburgh for tonight's game does not include Latang. So we're iffy on whether or not he will play at the very least, um, but maybe he's trending towards not playing. I'm not sure. So their blue line without Latang. Brian Dumoulin's Brian Dumoulin on the top pair with Jeff Petrie, Marcus Patterson, and Jan Ruda on the second pair, and then former Sabre Chad Verweedle still sticking it out on Pittsburgh's third pair. He is paired with Pierre Oliver Joseph. It's a great name for a hockey player. Uh, and then in net for Pittsburgh, Casey DeSmith, Trist, as he's expected to. It's not official, but he's supposed to be uh, Casey DeSmith. Tristan Jari started on Tuesday night against Boston for the Penguins, which means... The Sabres will face their eighth backup goaltender in 10 games. That's incredible. They're not all by decision. Uh, Game one against Ottawa, Cam Talbot had an injury. Um, Someone else had an injury along the way. So, but it's eight backup goalies in 10 games for Buffalo. So that's a little bit of an advantage that they have been getting uh, along the way. The Smith's numbers on the season to this point, three games played, uh, nine goals allowed, 913 save percentage, not too shabby. The Smith also, by the way, was pretty good last year. And he's really always been pretty good as Pittsburgh's uh, backup goaltender. Um, Last year, a 914 save percentage, a 912 the year before. His career's at a 915. So his save percentage numbers have always been very strong. And I actually don't know where DeSmith ranks in terms of goals saved above expected, which is a good number to look at. Um, let's see. Goal saved above expected per 60 minutes at Money Puck. DeSmith ranks 22nd out of 67. So a pretty good goaltender, even though he's not officially a uh, Pittsburgh starter. How about the betting lines for tonight's game? We'll get into that. I've got a couple of prop bets I like. I've been hitting on my prop bets with the Sabres this season. So I'm going to hope hope to keep the juices uh, or hope to keep the ball rolling here. So we'll come back, look at the bet online uh, odds for tonight's game. We'll meet return here on Locked on Sabres. Welcome back to the Locked on Sabres podcast with Joe DiBiase. As always, we're brought to you by Bet Online, And let's look at Bet Online for our Odds for tonight's game. My favorite prop bets for tonight's game. We'll look at the money line, the puck line, and of course, the over under. I've been hitting the unders uh, all season, so I probably will avoid that tonight, uh, but I'll tell you why in a moment. So looking at the puck line for tonight's game, the Sabres are a very, very slight underdog, which means the puck line is on them tonight, plus a goal and a half, but it's at minus 248. Stay the hell away from that. Minus 248, you'd have to bet 250 to win 100 on the Sabres to either lose by a goal or win the game. Uh, The Sabres on the money line tonight are, again, as slight an underdog as you could possibly be. Plus 103, while Pittsburgh is favored, minus 114. So for you non-betters out there, that means you'd have to bet 100 and or you'd bet 100 on the Sabres to win 103. You have to bet 114 on the Penguins to win 100. And then the total. By the way, I kind of like the Sabres on that tonight. I like the Sabres on the money line. If I'm going to choose one of these bets, I like the money line. Uh, Pittsburgh on the second of a back-to-back. They've lost five in a row. Their blue line is thin. They might not have Latang. Sabres are playing hot, uh, and they help, they'll have their starting goaltender in tonight. Uh, I like the Sabres on the money line. Uh, the over-under for tonight's game. Over-under, six and a half. With juice is on the over, minus 119 on the over, and a plus 108 on the under. Um, I think even though you've got to pay a little bit more to get the over, I'm going to go with the over uh, six and a half in this game at minus 119. Uh, I think we're going to get some goals. Both these teams like to move up and down the ice. Both teams like to score. And both teams are banged up on the blue line if Latang is going to miss. We know the Sabres, of course, are banged up at the blue line, missing Samuelson, Yoki Haru, and Labushkin. Favorite prop bets for tonight's game. I'm going to go with the shots on. I haven't done that yet this season. I don't think. Maybe I did that for game one. Uh, I like Alex Tuck over two and a half shots um, at minus 114. Tuck this season, it's pretty close. It's a good line. Tuck would have hit the over on two and a half shots in five of nine games this season. Uh, Last year, Tuck averaged 2.78 shots per game. And that's kind of baked into the number a little bit there at minus 114. Uh, But Tuck's been missing the net. 
a lot of shot attempts, not necessarily all have been on goal. So I feel like Tuck has been whipping the puck at the net, and I think he's going to find his way tonight. And also, on a line with Dylan Cousins, Cousins is a very good playmaker. And I think when Tuck was on that line with Jeff Skinner and Tage Thompson, he kind of gets sucked into being the playmaker because Thompson is a goal scorer and Skinner is a goal scorer. But now Tuck's on a line with Cousins and J.J. Paterka. Both are good playmakers. Both are good puck carriers. And I think that allows Tuck to be a little bit more of a goal scorer uh, in this game. So I like Tuck to go over two and a half shots. And then another prop bet I like for tonight's game uh, is anytime goal scorer. And I'm going to go with Victor Olofsson uh, in this game. Um, Victor Olofsson is at plus 250 to score a goal tonight. Six goals so far on the season. I told you before the year, I think he'll hit the 30 goal mark, uh, especially now that he's playing on that power play, plus 250. You're getting better odds than Thompson at plus 140, uh, better odds than Skinner at plus 200, or Tuck at plus 200. I like Olofsson at plus 250. And that's going to wrap it up for today's episode of the Lockdown Sabres podcast. Enjoy the game. Enjoy the reverse retro uniforms, the goat head versus the robo pen. Uh, that is coming up on Wednesday night. And we will talk to you tomorrow to talk about it and hopefully uh, talk about a Sabres win. Thanks for listening to the Lockdown Sabres podcast and making us your first listen every day. Now go make your second listen, Lockdown Sports Today. The biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day. That's available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcast. We will talk to you tomorrow here on Lockdown Savers.